the fiscally constrained environment, this administration has been able to increase the federal government's commitment to the NSI by 50%. Acting President inaugurates Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority Board. Finally, it has come. We hope it will be signed into law and uh, it, the commencement will start immediately. Nigerians react to passage of 7.44 trillion Naira 2017 budget. Yeah, it's been my passion to go out there and see sick Nigerian children with congenital heart disease and also to offer the best help I can to them. And 20 open heart surgery cases underway at the University of Nigeria Teaching Hospital in Enugu. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on NT Network News. I'm Cyril Stober. Acting President Yemi Oshibaju has inaugurated the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority Board, NSIA, the second since inception in May 2011 through an act of the National Assembly. The acting president said, as the nation navigates to sufficient and diversified economy, it is the expectation of Nigerians that the NSIA would remain increasingly strategic to the nation's growth and development. State House correspondent Jide Unifadi reports. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Those to serve on the board are Jide Zentling as chairman, Uche Oji as the managing director, Ojekwe Onyejeji, and Peter Achaman, Aswe Igodalo, Laraba Machunga Disu, Belu Machido, Kalu Eke, and Alima Buba. Acting President Yemi Oshimbaju described the members as men and women of proven integrity and whose experience is suspected to bear on the diversification of the nation's economy. As he stated, the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority has maintained the track record of consistent positive performance and displayed an impressive capacity for growth. Indeed, despite the fiscally constrained environment, this administration has been able to increase the federal government's commitment to the NSI by 50%, committing an additional $500 million. Though the federal government is committed to saving, the actual charge with this additional capital is investment. SIA, the acting president explained, serves as a good tool of fiscal discipline, ensuring future availability of capital through investments in long-term assets and managing Nigerian savings. Uh, we're very uh, confident that this board will look after uh, our future resources and provide very good in investment decisions and guidance to the executive management in line with the administration's um, expectations and requirements. We're very committed to both protecting um, funds for future generations as well as making investments today uh, in infrastructure that will help enhance and be aligned with the government's priorities, with the existing administration's priorities. You're going to see us in agriculture, commodities exchange, you're going to see us in agriculture infrastructure, you'll see us in power, you'll see us in toll roads. Well, we're doing Second Niger Bridge, we'll continue to work on that. Uh, you're going to see us on other areas such as healthcare. Healthcare is one of the big areas of focus for the NSIA. And then you'll see us in what we describe as midstream to downstream oil and gas. As the NSIA moves to the second phase of its existence, the expectation is that the committed capital would be deployed into projects that are in line with the administration's key priority areas, namely infrastructure and agriculture, in order to improve the economy. In the State House, Jude Onifade, NT News. Now, experts have suggested the need for crucial players in the budget process to agree on a timetable or calendar as a means to ensure that the document is not unnecessarily delayed. They were speaking on NTS program Good Morning Nigeria, which focused on the passage of the 2017 budget. Timothy Yusuf reports. The anxiety over delaying the passage of 2017 budget by the National Assembly came to an end this Thursday with 143 billion naira, higher than the figure presented to the National Assembly by the President. Senate spokesperson Sabi Abdullahi, who is also a member of the Appropriation Committee, justified the enlargement of the budget. But Dr. Obadiah Melafia, a former Deputy Governor of the CBN, differed. Given the current you know, favorable you know, price, we decided, look, let's take it up, 
a bit so that we can have additional funds to be able to form some of this critical infrastructural deficit. Mm -hmm. And that's what the National Assembly did. As far as the National Assembly is concerned, there is nothing like okay. budget padding. The executive that knows how much he is able to spend and anything involving adding by the National Assembly gets me very worried. They believe that early presentation of the appropriation bill by the executive to the legislature will further bring fuel to anxiety on the passage of budget to a stop. An economic analyst, Nia Kinsiju, commended the National Assembly for the enlargement of the budget and argued that it portends the sign of a robust economy in the days ahead. Whatever would be the challenges of 2016, uh, now the figures coming in either from the Nigerian stock market or the capital market, uh, especially uh, the kind of results being returned by companies listed on the stock exchange, it's, is that we have a, an economy that is being resuscitated. The experts are, however, optimistic that the budget will be implementable and financiable. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. While well, Nigerians have continued to react to the passage of the 2017 budget by the National Assembly, they spoke about their expectations with correspondent Joy Uzo. With the eventual passage of the budget by the National Assembly, Nigerians remain expectant that the budget will meet their aspirations. Finally, it has come, we hope, the commencement will start immediately for the benefit of Nigerians. From next week, we expect changes in every area because poverty is hitting everybody hard. That which I would uh, like them to do is to concentrate on the educational sector, complete abandoned projects, then look at the welfare of workers. If the government is really sincere and then is implemented to a logical conclusion, I believe that it will impact on the lives of the masses. They called for strict implementation of the budget as a way of us tracking Nigeria's exit from the economic recession. Because it's a budget of recovery, as the president uh, uh, you know, mentioned in the budget uh, speech, should have given more to agriculture, demonstrating commitment to truly diversifying the economy. Nigerians are asking a lot of questions and I think it is time they key into our aspirations and the kind of things we demand from them. They believe that with sincere implementation, the country will be on course for rapid economic development. In Abuja, Joy Uzo, NTA News. Well, joining me now to examine the budget as passed by the National Assembly is a development economist, financial analyst and World Bank consultant, Dr. Emeka Okengu. Thanks for being with us. An honor to be here. Thanks for having me. Right. 7.44 trillion Naira. What's your take on this? My take is it's, it's, it's what it is. It's a budget. It's a budget. It's an appropriation bill. Uh, at best, it's a financial plan that you've cashed in figures. And I, don't, I see the excitement of Nigerians, but it's also good uh, to remind them that we still don't have a budget until you have the presidential consent to it. And uh, with the uh, hindsight of history, uh, what happened in the last uh, two budgets, uh, there's every possibility that he might go forth and back. I, mean, I saw one of the respondents saying that uh, she wants action in the next one week. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, that's not how you operate. Okay, what happens is that the executive brings a proposal, budget proposal, uh, the National Assembly Legislature now, you know, brings the budget appropriation bill or what you call an appropriation bill and it's not returned, you know, to the executive. Most of the times, the last time we saw uh, the president, you know, with a fine comb and then that was how the issues of padding and everything came. So I don't think we'll have a financial problem. Right, some time to go still. But um, looking at the figures, recurrent and uh, capital expenditure. Again, I'm a little bit worried, you know, worried in the sense that what you have, you know, it's your source of income. And that's what I'm saying, uh, that you have seven trillion does not mean you're going to spend seven trillion. You would need to look for seven trillion. And uh, in looking for seven trillion, you must be able to now look at the sources of government funding. They're talking about uh, domestic recoveries, they're talking about uh, special recoveries, they're talking about uh, allocation from FAC, they're talking about, you know, special government revenues. And uh, you now need to just oppose this against you know, the other figures that are supposed to be driving what you call your inputs, okay? What are your OE benchmarks, you know, what's, uh, you know, your exchange forex uh, fixed rates? I mean, you're looking at a 305, you know, against even the official rates of a 360, you know, that is being, you know, operated by the central bank. So it begins to give you worry, you know, more so when you already have 
even with these figures, a deficit of over two trillion. Now, that's, that's the, worry. Right. This economy is just coming out of recession. Well, it is in the process of coming out of recession. You think these es estimates can generally address an economy of this nature? Well, you're, you're the one who's supposed to be asking the questions. I mean, so what are the indicators that we're coming out of recession? We are trying to spend out of recession. And that's my worry, okay, because you must be looking at the economic uh, recovery and growth program as against the budget, because, I mean, it's all about where are, what are the critical infrastructure that you're supposed to be spending in? What are those indicators or indices you must focus on to be able to get out of, out of your recession? Somebody has said agriculture. Right now, we're in the rains. If we're going to be using seedlings, we're going to be getting inputs, are they there? Okay, you're talking about roads, which is key to your economic recovery. Are you going to be building roads under the rains? So the key to critical infrastructure, as you have them, must be your major focus. And, I, and like I said, it's not as if the president or the presidency has assented to this project, Siri. So I don't think we're ready to run uh, it. Don't tell me you're worried about a lead start, are you? I am worried about so many things. I'm worried about, about the source of funding. I'm worried about you're, you're running a budget in a recession that has a, over two trillion in deficit. Okay, but all, all of, I mean, but we must be hopeful. Uh, it's, it, I, I would have been more comfortable if I saw the implementation program as announced by the Minister of National Planning being tied, you know, to uh, a, a budget release program. Because, like I said to you, that you have seven trillion does not mean you're going to be spending seven trillion. That's that's very key, and all it's right. important that we understand that. Okay, we'll leave it there and just keep a close watch and see. How it goes. Well, I'm I'm, I'm a Muslim Nigerian. Let's let's hope it works. It's, it's right. not going to be Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank right. Uh, moving on. Discussions highlighting the development needs of Niger, which will form part of perspectives in the Africa debate in Germany, came to the fore in Abuja. The forum, under the platform of a Marshall Plan with Africa, featured speakers from Niger's private sector, artists, youths, parliamentarians, and trade experts. Oku Ekweong reports. A series of initiatives puts the future of Africa in the focus of the German government, with Germany promising to strategically and financially support Africa in the development of its growth potentials. What does Nigeria really want? That is of interest to us here as we have an office in Nigeria. Voices from Nigeria in the debate puts in perspective the development Nigeria wants with an attempt to answer some questions bordering on job creation, electricity issues, sustainable investments, critical infrastructure, and how the development can be truly Nigerian. What we need from the West is that first of all we should be treated as equal and as human beings. Again, introducing the infrastructure produces an opportunity for Germany to work with Nigeria. Participants are optimistic of a mutually beneficial collaboration between Nigeria and Germany, which will change the narratives and bring the needed transformation in Nigeria. We should return to the basics, where public sector must invest strongly and heavily like President Muhammad Buhari is doing today. I would love to see a, a collaboration where they see Africa as a possible partner. The debate was organized by the Henrich Ball Foundation. Oku Ekmayong, NTA News. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, says Nigeria will adopt cultural diplomacy to end the incessant xenophobic attacks of Nigerians in South Africa. The minister stated this when he received the South African High Commissioner to Nigeria, Lulu Nguni. Anthony Forson reports. Expressing Nigeria's desire to bring an end to the ugly trend, the minister said parastatals such as the National Council for Arts and Culture, Nigerian Tourism Development Corporation, and Nigerian Film Corporation will soon embark on a series of activities in South Africa to strengthen the understanding between the two countries. Include joint musical concerts, co-production in the areas of films, visit of popular Nollywood actors and actresses to South Africa, as part of a Nigerian delegation going on a confidence-building trip. Exhibitions featuring Nigerian delicacies to be entitled A Taste of Nigeria and a town hall meeting for Nigerians resident in South Africa. Stressing the need to build people-to-people -people relationship with a view to stemming the tide of xenophobia as Nigeria and South Africa have for long treated each other with love. 
The minister pointed out that with over 200 South African companies doing business in Nigeria and thousands of Nigerians frequently traveling to South Africa. What we are starting today with the visit of your excellency will have ramifications far beyond the shores of Nigeria and South Africa. On his part, the South African High Commissioner to Nigeria, Lulu Nguni, said South Africa is now committed to reciprocating the good gesture of Nigeria during their dark days of apartheid. We believe that using culture, using films, using poetry, and many other forms of culture, we will be able to strengthen our cohesion to such an extent that nobody can come in and undermine our commitment to be working together. To enlighten citizens of the two countries about their time-tested tradition. In Abuja, Antony Forson, NTA News. Acting President Yami Oshimbaju has felicitated with former Inspector General of Police, Alhaji Aliu Ibrahim Atta, on his 80th birthday. A statement by the Senior Special Assistant Media and Publicity Laulua Kondi wished Al Hajiata longer life, good health, and prayed to God that as his days are, so shall his favor and strength be. While well, noting his patriotic service, Acting President Oshibaju commended Al Hajiata for the reforms he brought into the police force as he rose through the ranks, culminating in the upgrade of the communication and networking structure of the institution that saw more measured prevention of crimes, speedy response, digital tracking and profiling of criminal suspects. As the former Inspector General of Police becomes an octogenarian, the acting president recalled that the increase of the Nigerian police force in numbers and skill sets between 1990 and 1993 was largely inspired by ATA, a notable feat of no mean historical relevance. And in furtherance of her care for the needy, wife of the president, Aisha Muhammad Buhari, recently provided relief to victims of insurgency in the Northeast. A package of the milestone tagged In the Eye of a Mother will be broadcast on NTA network at five minutes past ten tonight. All NTA stations are to hook onto the network service. And you can watch this news online via the NT mobile app, which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. And still to come, Chief Justice of Nigeria, Walter Onogen, warns the political class to stay clear of the judiciary if Nigeria's democracy is to survive. This and more when we return. Let's pepper them. So tell somebody to tell everybody to come join Maya, baby. And they bring too much sauce. No mega music talk. It's gonna be a mad over your tail. Yo, where you know we are show stoppers. I'm your host for the biggest show ever. If you miss the stuff, you're gonna miss everything. So join me, guys. Let's turn it up. We'll be storming across Nigeria. I won't be anywhere else. Everyone who is anyone is going to be there. All Nigeria's endless musicians. One big stage. Live and direct. No mega music tour all over Nigeria. So watch out because we did come. Let's go! It's the Glow Mega Music Tour with your favorite anchors and special guest stars. It's going to be untamed. Text music and your preferred location to 207. Use 2000 Naira Glow Airtime in one month to stand in line for your free ticket. So what are you waiting for? The Glow Mega Music Tour. Glow Unlimited. You intend traveling for the Laser Hajj Umrah and other business trips to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia? If yes, it's your answer. Then, here is good news from Osman Air. Come Thursday, the 11th of May, 2017, Osman Air will commence two flights weekly to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. This is indeed a rare opportunity for you and those who had sleepless nights and suffered in the hands of non-promising agents. Osman Air, one of the Africa's growing airlines, is reliable, time-conscious, with safety records that gives you maximum comfort. 
For more details, contact Osman Air Head Office, number 1, Zari Road, Kano, Nigeria, or Customer Care on 090-99-80-0600 or 090-29-80-0600. Email info at airosman.com or our website www.airosman.com. Fly safe, fly Osman, Osman Air. The Interim President, American University of Nigeria, Professor Legend Kessenberry, on behalf of the Founder, Board of Trustees and Management, invites the general public to the commencement and corporate award ceremonies of AUN's graduating class of 2017, scheduled for Saturday, 13th May 2017, at the Lamida Liu Mustafa Commencement Hall, Yola, time 10 o'clock in the morning. Keynote address will be delivered by Mr. Ike Chioke, Managing Director, Afri Invest West Africa Limited, announcer Daniel Okereke, Executive Director, Communications and Public Relations. I can't believe she just rejected me and my camera. She rejected my lights. How can she not want makeup? Maybe when the battery dies, she'll come back to us. Nah, not with a 4,000 milliamp battery. Experience the best selfies of your life. Gioni A1 Super Selfie Super Battery. The Director General and Management of the National Broadcasting Commission hereby invites all stakeholders in the broadcasting industry to a three-day retreat to review the fifth edition of the Nigeria Broadcasting Code. Date, Monday 15th May to Wednesday 17th May 2017. Venue, Bristol Palace Hotel, 54 Kudu Abdullahi Street, Farm Center, Nasarawa, Kanu, Nigeria. Beginning from 9 a.m. each day, participants will be responsible for their transportation and accommodation. Come and be a part of these critical efforts to further enhance broadcasting standards and regulations in Nigeria for the benefit of all. Management announcer, NBC, your right to quality broadcasting. From the south south to the northeast, southeast to the northwest, southwest to the north central, the Future Assured project and its components get involved is restoring hope to millions of Nigerian women and children. We are actually doing a lot on the Future Assured, the program of Her Excellency Mrs. Aisha Muhammad Buhari. And I believe what we are doing so far is impacting positively on the lives of women and children in Nigeria, particularly those in the internally displaced camps across the nation. Get involved. Support the Future Assured Initiative. Email programs at futureassured.org.ng. Future Assured, promoting and protecting the lives of Nigerian women and children. The National Institute for Cultural Orientation, NICO, in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture, invites the general public to a two-day annual roundtable on cultural orientation, ATCO, with the theme, Nigerian Indigenous Language Newspapers and National Development. The event, which will have the Honorable Minister of Information and Culture, Alahajulai Mohammed, as the chief host, will be chaired by Senator Matthew Ohoyide, Chairman, Senate Committee on Culture and Tourism, Special Guest of Honor, His Excellency, Malam Nas El Rufai, Executive Governor, Kaduna State, while the Emir of Zazao, Alahaju Shehu Idris, will be the Royal Father, Keynote Speaker, Sam Nda Isaiah, Chairman and Publisher, Leadership Newspapers, while Professor Ulu Obafemi of the University of Ilorin will be the moderator. Date, 15th to 16th May, 2017, Venue, Arawa House, Kaduna, Time, 11 a.m. Prompt, Niku, Harnessing Culture for National Development, Associate Professor, Bakley, Faubiri Ayakuruma, Executive Secretary, Niku, announced. So. Thanks for staying with us on the news. Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onogen, has warned the political class to steer clear of the judiciary if the nation's democracy is to survive. He gave the warning while delivering judgment on the Abia State Governorship Appeal in which the Supreme Court affirmed the governorship of Okeze Ipeazu. Judiciary correspondent Femi Okewu reports.
The CJN's comments almost overshadowed the judgment in the appeal by Uche Oga, who had sought to wrestle the governorship of Abia State from Ekwazu through a pre-election litigation in 2016. The case had caused a scare in Abia State when, on the 27th of June last year, Justice Okon Abang of the Federal High Court Abuja sacked Ekwazu from office on allegation of tax offenses. Since then, the two appellate courts have disagreed with that verdict, and finally now the Supreme Court has restored Governor Ikweazu, saying the whole voyage of the allegation of tax offenses was a mere waste of time. But more worrisome to the Chief Justice of Nigeria was the pressure and interference that went into the whole litigation. He categorically announced that in this case there had been a breach of security and that the judiciary would investigate and punish anyone found to have been involved, whether as staff or as litigant. He had made it very clear that politicians and parties should not try to compromise the judiciary in any manner. We are also thankful to the appellants for coming this way and not um, fighting on the streets. The matter has been resolved. It should stay resolved. I think it's a great day for Abia State. We are delighted with what has happened today. At least the state can now move forward. It is not a usual judicial process for a governorship election to run through all the courts of the land and end up in the Supreme Court twice. The Abia case is one such unusual case. And with this pre-election matter now concluded, let's hope that Abia State can now go into governance and take a cue from the position of the Chief Justice of Nigeria. From the Supreme Court, Femi Okeowu, NTA News. In the meantime, Abia State Governor Dr. Okeze Ikpiazu says his victory at the Supreme Court over a suit instituted by Samson Ucheoga is a victory for Abia people. The governor stated this while reacting to the judgment at the Supreme Court. Dennis Temple reports. The governor said that he has been on legal tussle with his opponent for over the two years of the inception of his administration and expressed satisfaction that the victory has finally come from the Supreme Court. He says he has no grudges against his challengers and urged them to embrace his government in order to develop Abia State. Today God has granted us victory finally so that the ends of the world will know that there is God in Abia State. Commenting further on the Supreme Court victory, some prominent Abiasons said the victory is a victory for democracy and good governance. A church service was also organized by his supporters at the government house chapel in Omaha. Dennis Temple, NTN News. Speakers at day two of the second National Security Summit have suggested some far-reaching measures in curbing farmers' herders clashes, kidnapping, and other violent crimes in the country. Edino Justice reports that this time around, emphasis was laid on the need to modernize agricultural practices, strict adherence to rule of law, and constitutional rules for traditional rulers. Speakers drawn from the academics, professional groups, traditional rulers, and civil society organizations traced some of the problems to population exploitation, land use act, poor funding of security personnel, and non-implementation of recommendations of previous committees set up by governments. Discussing hunger, we're discussing nutrition, we're discussing women. So the paradigm in security has shifted from use of just security forces, physical security, to human security. It's an international problem. Nigerian police alone cannot cope with these winners. Let's internationalize it. They recommended that Nigerians who see peace building as a process, not an event, understand the mode of religious manipulation, speak out the truth at all times, and government to boost the morale of security agencies. Security is a very expensive business. It is not cheap. I think we must be ready as a nation to commit enough funds to security. We must regulate the activities of hearts men. Control their children from grazing just any time. Control them from grazing in the night. From International Conference Center, Abuja, Edina Justice, NTA News. Bielsa State Police Commissioner, Mr. Sukwa Amber, has paraded 32 suspects for cultism and other crimes. The police commissioner has intensified crime prevention through visible policing, patrols, and active participation of neighborhood watches via the vigilante groups. 
Vera John reports. The Commissioner of Police, Bielsa State Command, Mr. Amba Asukwa Amba, told journalists that the command's vision is to reduce crime to the barest. He disclosed that the command in the last two weeks has been able to apprehend about 32 cultists from different cult groups, 12 out of which are members of Greenlanders, nine Icelanders, six Bobos, and two Vikings members who had been terrorizing parts of the state. Autism is a prevalent crime here in Bielsa, and that the line between cultism and rob robbery is very slim. So we can as well, even though we identify them, some of them mostly as cultism, that they are involved in some of the robberies we have of recent um, discovered. Sensitive to our environment, to the relationship we keep, to our social life, those are just part of the security tips that we all have to the Commissioner of Police advised parents to monitor the activities of their words while also calling on the public to provide useful and timely information to the police to enable them carry out their duties effectively. We should have whistleblowers that can give us better information so that we can mop up this. Items recovered from the suspects include a locally made pistol, machetes, daggers, master key and face masks amongst others. In Yenegoa, Vera John. And the need for media outfits outside Nigeria to report more on activities in the country has been stressed. Executive Director News Mohamed Labbu, who represented the Director General Yaqub Ibn Mohamed, made the appeal at a meeting with members of the Nigeria Union of Journalists and their Chinese counterparts. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday reports. Members of the NUJ and All China Journalists Association are in the largest TV network in Africa, NTA, to further solidify the revival of their relationship. Mala Muhammad Labo said the relationship between the two giants of their continents has been improved upon by the present administration and converses for more knowledge and idea sharing. We look at Nigeria positively, report in your various media platforms in China, the positive things about Nigeria because there's so much in Nigeria that um, is unreported in the um, foreign media. To expose them to the broadcasting culture in Nigeria. NUJ President Abu Wahabo Dushile said the union is set to establish its TV station as a point of reference to media outfits in the country. We'll tell the story the news, the way it is, it will be an old news station and we want to teach, especially those who are in the field, this is how it should be. This is what we call talk about professionalism, this is the example. We saw that the Nigerian media has very much development in the new media area, area, so we hope that we can learn from each other. The meeting is expected to strengthen ties between pen professionals of the two countries. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Adherence to Islamic values and total commitment to the worship of Allah is said to be key to attracting Allah's mercy and forgiveness. Chief Imam of Asaruddin Mosque, Abuja, Imam Musa Olawfe, stated this while delivering his Friday sermon. Ilyasu Ali Yakubu reports. Lack of adherence to religious and cultural values remains one of the ills eroding total value system, social interaction, and insecurity bedeviling the entire world. Nigeria today is battling to redeem the value system for peace, growth, and development of the society. The chief imam's sermon was in tune with happenings around the country as he enjoined Muslims to be faithful servants of Allah. Imam Musa Olaofe advised people in position of authority to show mercy and compassion to subordinate in line with the teachings of the Holy Quran. Our utterances, the way we we'll address people, the way we talk to people, even our mode of dressings, even our mode of uh, worshipping, it has to be increased. We need to move closer to Allah. The Jumad prayers also witness special dua for President Muhammad Buhari's health recovery and the Permanent Secretary Common Services in the office of the Head of Service, Yami Adelakun, who is billed to retire next Monday. My joy knows no bounds. 
and I owe all that to Almighty Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and that's why this is the first port of call to come and thank God. In Abuja, Iliasu Aliakubu, NTA News. And the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON, has appealed to the Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, FRCN, to publicize activities of the Muslim pilgrimage all year round and not restrict it to the Hajj exercise. Chairman of the Commission, Abdullahi Mukhtar, made the appeal during the Commission's visit to the Director General of FRCN, Mansur Liman. The chairman said such publicity will help the Commission get feedback from both the public and prospective pilgrims on areas of lapses or consolidating achievements where need be. He also requested the corporation to widen its scope of Hajj exercise coverage to give pilgrims, majority of whom are from the rural areas, a platform where they can communicate with their relations in Nigeria while in Saudi Arabia, something that was the practice before. We would like FRCN to draw the attention of reporters. They should be careful in taking such stories because Hajj is a bilateral issue, is a transborder activity. So sometimes reporting things that are negative and not beneficial to our own country, neither the host country, may bring some diplomatic issues between Nigeria and Saudi. Abdullahi Musa Suleja reports that Director General of FRCN, Mansour Liman, who said his organization stands a better chance to disseminate information to rural areas in the country, suggested a joint committee of both organizations to strategize and benefit in each other. The chairman appealed to prospective pilgrims to exercise some patience as soon this year's Hajj fairs will be announced by the federal government. And Lagos, a center of excellence, is our first spot of call tonight. Let's link up with Jennifer. Good evening, Jennifer. Thank you, Cyril. Good evening and welcome to Lagos. 258 Nigerians who were living illegally in Libya have been returned to Nigeria. The Deputy Director of Search and Rescue, National Emergency Management Agency, Ohimode Bamdele, who was at the Moritola Mohammed International Airport, Lagos, to receive them, disclosed that the federal government plans to resettle the voluntary returnees with their families. Abola de Salami has the details. The returnees who arrived around 9.43 p.m. Thursday night on board a Libyan airline included 24 females, one infant, 229 males and four children. They were received by officials of National Agency for the Prohibition of Traffic in Persons, NAPTIP, National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons, and National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA. The Deputy Director of Search and Rescue, NEMA, Unimodi Bandele, said the exercise is in line with the agenda of President Boris' administration to protect the lives of Nigerians, either at home or in foreign countries. As you can see, the agencies on ground with IOM to ensure that they are giving necessary palliative to return them back to normal. Most of the time, parents put pressure on their children. They give them the impression that it's better out there. Nothing. There's absolutely nothing there. We have a way of welcoming them, counseling them, and doing the needful. Some of the returnees shared their harrowing experiences. We have freedom here. In Libya, even Libya indigene has more freedom. There's no good food. They maltreat human beings like dogs. The regulatory agency advised youth to take advantage of opportunities that are bound in the country. In Lagos, Abola de Salami, NTA News. 67 candidates have successfully completed an eight-week intensive training in fashion designing. Lindy Lake reports that this collaboration between the Vlisco Group and the Nigerian Export Promotion Council will assist in revamping the nation's garment and textile industry, which has been moribund for years. 
This partnership with Nigeria Export Promotion Council, Vilisco says, is to support tailors, dressmakers, local designers to create a platform capable of connecting African fashion to new trends. We discovered that the skills of fashion designing in Nigeria is very low and that is why you see that exporting what we can do is a challenge because it does not meet international standards. The 67 graduates were carefully selected after undergoing thorough screening. The training by Vilisco and the Nigerian Export Promotion Council is aimed at promoting skills acquisition and skilled manpower. We want to create a class, a, a group of people that are world class, and then with our partnership with the export industry, they are able to make garments that are exportable. We're also looking at creating a hub for them so that they can make use of that hub so that they can do well on their agua and spell on apparel. After several weeks of intensive training in basic tailoring techniques, five out of 67 graduates were selected as the best hand. When they become world class, they will carry the brand and they will carry the local content, which is Nigeria alone. We are all together, and I know by the grace of God we will make it. Since it was established in 1846, Vlisco designs and fabrics have grown to become an essential part of African style culture. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. Now to business. Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council mandates to transform business landscape in the country comes into focus as mechanized farming receives a boost in Lagos. For these and more, Ademola Adeoye is a guide on business news segment. Good evening and thanks for joining us on business news segment. I am Ademola Adeoye. The mandate of the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council to improve business climate and ensure that the country ranks among top 100 countries in the World Bank Ease of Doing Business rating by the year 2019 is being actualized. Director General, Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Muda Yusuf, made this assertion while appraising one of the steps taken by the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council. There are some soft issues that have been addressed already. The issue of business registration, for instance. It's not an infrastructure issue as such. That is being fixed by the government. Issue of the bureaucracy in the ports. Issue of immigration. So if you look at all those scenarios, we see that, of course, I mean, there is something to hope for in terms of improving the business environment. But what is most critical is infrastructure. Let's now see how trading went on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Market capitalization stood at 9.74 trillion naira, while the OSHA index closed at 28,192.46 points. Volume of shares traded finished at 1.6 billion valued at 9.19 billion naira, which swapped hands at 5,342 deals. Pivot Nigerian PLC with 9 naira 59 kobo led the gainer stable, followed by Unity Bank, which added 7 naira 14 kobo to its share price. While Orlando PLC with 9 naira 64 kobo loss was top on the losers category, followed by Fitzin Health, which depreciated by 4 naira 95 kobo. That's it on Business News segment. Stay tuned for more stories on the news at 9. Good evening. Kidimola, you're still watching NTN Network News. We have more reports ahead from Abuja with Cyril after this timeout. Please stay tuned. Oh, is in the air. It's data. It's what you use every time you download music. It's what streams movies. It's what the banks use to check your account. It's the very life blood of modern living. Data. And where does it all come from? According to industry sources, more and more of it came from here. They acknowledge that Glow is now the largest data network in Nigeria. With their own Glow One submarine cable linked seamlessly to tens of thousands of kilometers with their own fiber optic cable. Glow can provide huge data capacity anywhere at a more flexible and affordable price than anyone. It's simple. So you see, Glow is in the air. It's everywhere. Say hello. To the Grandmaster. These data plans are available to all new customers and existing customers who renew their plans. Star Triple Seven Hash. The largest data network. Glow. Grandmasters of Data.
goodness of little orange pulp in every bottle. Where's the pulp? Buy the live pulp in orange. Now in your neighborhood. I can't believe she just rejected me and my camera. She rejected my lights. How can she not want makeup? Maybe when the battery dies, she'll come back to us. Nah, not with a 4,000 milliampere battery. Experience the best selfies of your life. Gioni A1 Super Selfie Super Battery. Issues in the sports sector remain one of the most debated among Nigerians. Due to the passion, followership, government involvement, impact on Nigeria's external image on our national life in the sports parliament. The NTA offers Nigerians deep views on issues with experts in the sports sector, offering in-depth analysis, hindsight, insight and foresight towards elevating Nigerian sports to the zenith on the floor of the sports parliament. So many things have been wrong in sports. Uh, we've been talking around it. We need performance expertise. And you can only get some of this where you have world-class facilities. How can sports deliver return of investment to attract the kind of money required to take it to the next level? We cannot interfere in the internal affairs or even the federations that belong to us. Sports Parliament, a unique platform for sports discussions showing live on the NTA. Thursdays at 11 p.m. Keep a day with the parliamentarians. Your eyes have it. Nigerians. Suicide bombers are not spirits. They are not ghosts. They are human beings like you and me. They live amongst us. They are your neighbors. We are your friends today, but terrorists tomorrow. So you must know your neighbor now. Security begins with you and me. Know your neighbor. Be vigilant. Be security conscious. Report suspicious persons, objects, and movements to the police and other security agencies. The security of our nation is a duty for you and me. If you see something, say something. Nigeria, unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. And the rest of the news now. The 15th session of open heart surgery at the University of Nigeria Teaching Hospital, UNTH Enugu, has commenced. A non-governmental organization, VOOM Federation, is handling the session with a total of 20 surgery cases in the lineup. Chiegonu Aro completes the story. According to recent World Health Survey, every 1 to 2% of any given community has a heart disease. And so a Nigerian cardiothoracic surgeon based in the United States of America, Dr. Vincent Ugochuku Ohaji, has partnered with the UNTH for over 10 years to ensure that an average Nigerian who may not have the resources and financial strength to go abroad for treatment and surgery can have it done effortlessly here in Nigeria. The VOOM Foundation is supported by various donors all over the world. Seen patients uh, come for surgery and go on home and then follow up in six months and you don't recognize them. That often obviously is what emboldens us. So yeah, it's been my passion to go out there and see sick Nigerian children with congenital heart disease and also to offer the best help I can to them. The chief medical director of the UNTH made a passionate appeal for federal government intervention. They were satisfied that uh, open heart surgery can be safely performed here. Some pioneer survivors of the first open heart surgery in 2013 spoke on their present health conditions. I did operation here exactly on the 13th of March 2013 and I was charged on the 20th of March. The UNTH has been consistent in open heart surgery since 2013 with about three foreign based collaborators in Enugu, Chiegono Aro, NTA News. 
JAM Registrar Professor Isaac Oluyidi has warned candidates to be wary of fraudsters who collect money from them for the 2017 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination, UTME. This followed the parade of a syndicate which allegedly registered candidates with a personal email address at the cost of 10,000 Naira. man is a cook and he collected 10,000 naira from each of them. Eh? And what he told me was that, do you know why he collected 10,000? He said some of them may make mistake. He has collected money for correction. He said arrangements had been concluded for the examination as candidates who missed the opportunity will not be rescheduled. Those students who have been held hostage by those people they gave their email address to, it was wrong for them to have done so, but tell the police as early as possible. If anybody is holding you to ransom by asking you for money, and you must not pay 1000 any amount to anybody. The 2017 UTME starts this Saturday. And our network news continues as we link up with Asimau for more reports from our Sokoto Network Centre. Asimau. Thank you, Cyril. Good evening and welcome to Sokoto. Forum of Secretaries to Government of APC Control States in Nigeria has suggested that 1% of the total cost of all contracts awarded by states and local governments should be paid into the proposed security trust fund of the Progressive Governors Forum. This is one of the resolutions reached at the end of a two-day meeting of secretaries to government of APC control states held in Sokotu. Elhat Abdullahi completes the report. The host of the second quarterly meeting, the Secretary to Government of Sukto State, Professor Bashir Garba, said it is imperative for the member states to enhance revenue generation for the development of their states. It was also resolved that the member states should develop integrated agricultural policy. On education, the communique suggested that all the APC controlled states should enact appropriate right to education law and adopt a public-private partnership funding arrangement to develop this sector. Governor Amin Waziri Tambal said, two years into the APC administration, significant achievements have been recorded in the areas of security, job creation, agriculture, education and youth empowerment, despite numerous challenges inherited in the country. The co-chairman of the Progressive Governors Forum, Plateau State Governor, represented by Secretary of the State, Rufus Bature, said the initiative offer opportunity to brainstorm on the campaign for governance of change in the country. In Sokotu, Dalat Abdullahi, NTA News. The first rainfall recorded this year in Sokotu has left some residents in distress while others said it was a welcome relief due to intense heat witness in the last two months. Safiya Abdullahi has a situation report on the first rainfall. In Sokoto State, like any other northern state, first rainfall of the year comes as a relief because of the intense heat that characterized the weather. Immediately after the downpour, farmers rush to their farmland and get prepared for the cropping season. However, for residents of some areas in Sokoto Metropolis, rainy season is a nightmare associated with flooding and other disasters. Residents of Ungwara Makafi, Ofalkwari, Mabera, and Magajangari areas complain bitterly about poor drainage system. For instance, this drainage was constructed about 55 years ago, and now it has been turned into refuse dump. Therefore, whenever it rains, houses will be flooded while roads will be submerged. They appeal to state government to come to their rescue by constructing drainages to avert flooding. We embark on serious dissenting of major drainages in the metropolis just to avoid flooding. Experts believe that residents should, through communal effort, desilt drainages and desist from indiscriminate dumping of refuse for easy flow of waters whenever it rains. In Sokoto, Sophia Abdullahi, NCA News. And that's it from Sokoto. Network News continues with Cyril in Abuja. Good evening. Thank you, Asmao. 
The NTA Television College, JOS, has graduated 102 internally displaced persons trained in digital camera operations and techniques. Executive Director Administration and Training, Dr. Steve Egbu, says NTA's objective is to empower the participants with skills to start up businesses of their own. We'll bring you more details on that in our subsequent bulletins. Sports now and 2017 Zadok National Scrabble Championship begins in Abuja as Manchester United and Ajax reach European League final. Details with Ayo Digi Makindi. 2015 World Scrabble Championship.